actually met George about six times before I realised I met him, is every time he looked different. I went to a party once, I thought he was that Susie out of Susie and the Banshees. Um, and he wasn't. And there's another time when he had his hair right up in the air, sort of white. You've probably seen a very famous picture of him and Marilyn. I thought he was really disgusting. I don't want anything to do with him then. Um, and event but I didn't know it was him, you see. Yes. I didn't know it was him. And then eventually I met him through Kurt Brandon of a spear of middle European angst. Uh, Destiny, that's right, yeah. And um, I met him in this place in Borough. There's this sort of rehearsal. It was very suited to George, actually. It was like a costumier's place. But in the Borough? In the Borough. In London. In right. the Borough, you know, know, my I know. Borough. I know, I know. Yeah. well. I'm you know the one, yeah, you know the one. And uh, he was jolly nice. He was really good, actually, because I met him. It was all made up. I wasn't used to this sort of things. I never went to the Blitz. I didn't like it. I took sort of a, a semester for that period. And um, he was with Kirk. He was really nice. sort of got up, shook my hand. And he was very friendly. Nice, amazing charisma around him. I'd seen George around the clubs and that, so I sort of knew who he was and thought he was interesting enough to form a band with, so I came along and we all sort of got on and uh, just went from there, really. Yeah. I approached George myself through, via some friends. They took me to a club where I found George DJing, a nightclub called Planets. He was DJing, he was DJing he yes, was with that. a pint of lager and blackcurrant by his side. What sort of records <laughs> did he play? Any good ones? Um, a, a classic was Sugar Sugar by the Arches. He used to play <laughs> that a lot. Um, just a real sort of old nostalgic stuff, mm. really. And uh, I popped the question to him, and he sort of said, Yeah, all right, I'll see you later. And that was that. He knew Mikey at the time, and there were just the two of them. And they had one song called Mask. We sort of went, I can see. What was it? I can see the emotion. Anyway, it was dreadful, like. It was like Limar Lane on Downers. It was uh, horrible. The good thing about this band is that what we do is that we spend like say four weeks writing together in a little dingy rehearsal room and then we argue, we throw coffee over each other, smash guitars, you know, swear, call each other obscenities and then when we go to the studio, we, you know, we all work. Yes. But we do all our arguing beforehand, but I mean, as regards to that like, politics and, you know, like even sexual matters, I mean, none of us have got anything in common whatsoever. In fact, sometimes, I'm to be quite honest with you, I look in the mirror with tears in my eyes and I think, what the hell am I doing yeah, with, with these Philistines? And they, no, but they think the same about me sometimes. Because with George sometimes, you're, um, you'll, be, you'll be trying to do something and they'll say, what are you doing, what are you doing, what are you doing? And you go, well, wait a minute. You know, sometimes you have to wait till something's finished 
to see how brilliant it is. I always say you need you need three things to write a song. You need good, you need good melody, you need good music, and good rhythm. Yeah. And within the band, there's all three three ingredients. And which like, bits do you contribute? I do I do the good music. I hope. <laughs> yes. Along with Mikey and John, but they, they mainly do the rhythms. Mikey and John are very good together, like sort of the Sly and Robbie of Culture Club, you know. Yes. Whereas I sort of I'm sort of MD, sort of musical director, yeah. and George is the sort of inspiration and the uh, the singer, you know. We're like one of the biggest bands in Japan for the last 15 years, but that's because we came here last year and we did like chat shows, we did really mediocre things, which most bands would turn their noses up against. You know, they would say, "Oh, we're not doing that." But you know, my attitude is that. It's, you know, you're far more lethal if you get right inside a society, you know, like in England. It's very easy to make a record for 10 people, you know what I mean? I wanted, wherever we've been in the world, I've wanted to penetrate it and go right inside so that everyone knows who you are, you know, so that everyone wants to take your picture, everybody wants to know about you. Do you feel as though it's, uh, it's, it's, it's becoming a strain now, or is it harder now than it was before? Did you feel as though, from being a sort of that big size celeb, you're turning into this size celeb? It's funny because I've never really taken it, I've never thought about it that much, you know, it's never been such a big deal to me. I mean, I don't actually, I don't care. If I'm going to be completely honest with you, I don't care about that side of it. I mean, I think I'm just a normal person who happens to be getting a lot more attention than other people. You know, I mean, I've always been a big mouth. I've always been obnoxious. I mean, even at school, I always got the most attention simply because I went out of my way to get it. But it's, you know, I don't feel better than other people. I just, you know, it what confuses sort of, what me. What sort of thing did you do at school? Well, like, um, you know, the teacher sort of tells you to get up and read something out because you know she's got a higher pitch voice yeah. and you sort of turn around and say no i will not you know sort of like words of that effect you know <laughs> be rude and everyone else would laugh I, I was like a court jester i'd make everyone laugh at school but we were talking about this the other day you know like people you know i was discussing like how sexuality has changed over the years i mean like say you know 20 years ago in my father's youth it was like yeah. effeminate to wear aftershave and now it isn't, you know, it's like a big, you know, everyone wears it. Mm. And I hope in about sort of 10 years time, there'll be another sort of, you know, like I think groups like Frank Goes to Hollywood won't be, won't be so outrageous, you know, people won't be so shocked, mm. you know, because I mean, it's so old, I mean, it is old fashioned, you know what I mean? I mean, look, there was Quentin Crisp. I mean, like, if you take, for example, Quentin Crisp, he could have been like a huge celebrity because there was no TV. He is now, isn't he? Yeah, but he is now, but imagine in his day, if they'd been like the tube and you put Quentin Crisp on the tube, suddenly you'd have had, oh, I'm the Quentin Crisp of Leeds, I'm the Quentin Crisp of Manchester, and it would have been a cult. But because nobody knew about it, nobody knew about homosexuals, nobody knew about weirdos, they were, they've been around for years. Mm. That's what I'm saying, it's not new. Mm, no, it's in the 18th century, people used to wear makeup I mean, look at, look at our country, what it came from. We were all drag queens, we wore like, you know, powdered wigs and that's white right, foundation. Yeah. And I just think the whole, that's what I think is hypocritical, which is why I love Japan. Because it's part, a very strong part of the culture, that kind of transversal uh, yeah. element. Come on. Let's do it. Come on. It's just going to take, by the way. On the street that beats your balance, Mr. Man, it's in your name. That's the Hunter over there. I'm 
Best sound check you've ever had then. Best sound check. Or about to have, who knows? Or, or about to have, who knows? Yeah, yeah. because Zen it, says there's no future and there's no past, it's all eternal. Tell me the sound of one handed clap. That is the secret of Zen. And I'll show you a man who needs to go to the doctor. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> this is true. Isn't this an enchanting Japanese garden that you've had built in your hotel? It is, yes. It's on the roof of my Cadillac, actually. Yes, it's it's uh, wonderful. There's George, he's uh, got buckets of water yeah. behind the bush. He's actually throwing them in. George, what's a perfect setting for you, if you don't mind me saying so? Fabulata. Isn't it? Do you, do you like all this Japanese setting? I do, actually, yes. This is right, isn't it? Much mm. nicer than the train, isn't it? Yep. Oh, here's something for our throat. <gasps> wow. Wonderfully kind. Thank you. It's also delicate and pleasant, isn't it? I know. Do you know something? Actually, from Japan, when you get fan letters from Japan, you know, they write in ink, and there's never a smudge on any of the paper. They write the yeah. most, they're most clean people. Oh, how lovely. Do you drink it? Thank you. Yes. Not a, a foot bath or something. Good. Thank you. Ooh. Ah. Oh. Uh. <laughs> As ever, Jules being polite sorry, in, I'm sorry, I'm in sorry. a fellow countryman's oh country. Dear. Oh dear. Tell us about what you've been shopping today, then. I just went to get some materials, actually. For, uh, That's a traditional Japanese material, there, then. Yeah, Pluto. He's a very big Chinese emperor. Oops, sorry, Japan. <laughs> no, I just went into the department store to get some material, you know, for my hair and stuff like that. You get recognised in Bobby. We did actually, yeah, it was good fun. Yeah. The only thing is that, you know, you can sort of avoid people in Japan, whereas you can't in England. You can't sort of. I mean, once I was in St. Christopher's Place and I had no makeup on, and I walked past these two girls and they said, Here, are you by George? And I went, No, and they went, You liar. And it was like a mouthful of abuse for about 10 minutes. You get an argument about whether you are or not. <laughs> I know, but you'd never get that here because they know damn well you are. So it's good fun. You, you use a tape recorder on stage? No. Yes, you I do. I told you not to say that. Yes, we do actually, yeah. It's got a, a drum machine on it which goes, Boom, ga! A bit like when you open the doors to the palace, you know, it's all quiet, you open the door and it goes boom, to the car, to the boom, close the door, nothing. Um, it's easier than getting one guy, as one guy would go crazy, mm. just going, you know, And you would be that guy. I would, I would, I was that man. Go! Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. I'll be a 
First of all, is I put this hideous complete mask. So this is not my face. Not hideous. Hideous, no, no hideous. No, this is not hideous. Put a mask of foundation on completely, like very. Is it this one of this? I would actually prefer to wear something much whiter, but we couldn't get anything to tar. And this person from the tube has kindly got me a toothbrush, which I brush my eyebrows with, so that when I this is real eyebrows, so that when I draw the rest on, it will not look so hideous. And that, now that's a diff there's, a diff there's a big difference between hideous and hideous. I think there is, yes, definitely. I mean, Dee Schneider from Twisted Sister is hideous. I'm just hideous. <laughs> right, you'll have to move back a little bit so I can do this properly. Okay. It's funny because when I first started Culture Club, you know, when the, the success thing really got to me, I wouldn't go out anywhere without makeup, but now I kind of go out shopping and stuff, and I don't really give a damn anymore. Do people recognise you when you're shopping? Yeah, of course. You know, the thing is, I mean, if, you know, there are some fans who like you because of the way you look in Patches and My Guy, and then there are other people who like what's inside your head, so, you know, now, I mean, now that we're a little bit more successful, I'm not so paranoid. I don't know if that's such a good thing, I don't know. But, um, I tend to not worry about it too much now, you know. Yeah. I don't really care, really, anyway. I'm growing up now. But I'm... <laughs> Boy, George, grows up. Man, George. You, you know, when I first started, when I used to wear my hat, I used to have it like that which kind of pulls the face right up, gives you a slant that I effect. Mm. I mean, Looks Japanese almost. Yeah, there's a lot of things you can actually do with makeup, which people, I mean, most people that put makeup on just put on blue eyeshadow, blah, blah, blah. But there is a lot of work you can do, which is, you know, amazing. I mean, anyone can make themselves look good. I mean, depending on whether you think men in makeup is a good idea. This is the most difficult part, dude. And people always ask me, how do you get your eyebrows straight? How do you get your eyebrows straight? They're, no, they never are. They no. never are. It's an illusion. I just have to kind of pull this side of the head up. Or that side of the head up. <laughs> but I won't do them all now. And when you're on stage as well, one of the most important things is uh, double chins. You know, when you open the copy of sounds the next morning and you've got five chins. So what you try to do, you know, if you're on stage, you wear obviously a lot more makeup than you would when you're going shopping. Yeah. But you wear, um, are you running out of film? Yeah. Under the chin, you wear like a grey. I mean, if you were really paranoid, you could like kind of shade your nose down. I mean, it, it goes on and on, but I'm, as you can see, I love my nose. That doesn't get touched, but this is a grey here. It's one of your most famous features. I know. Me and Concord. <laughs> this is uh, pretty shade under here. Yeah, I bet there's millions of old housewives in Barnet having heart attacks now. Don't worry, loves. <laughs> What's your message to those housewives in Barnet who are saying he's using our products? There's only one of us. Up to date? The worst thing in the world is when we are late. <laughs> the worst thing in the world is when you're late in Japan, they get really offended. I've been saying I don't give a damn for the last 20 minutes, but I'm also a bit worried. I don't upset them. Fillet O fish. Best yeah. night, best night, thing. Can you hear that wailing voice in the background? <laughs> Right. 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 Right.
Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Mikey! Come on. Look, You're everywhere and know it, baby. Baby. X where you're at. Hiya, hiya! Mum. Have we got a curtain tonight, Gary? Hello, Right on stage, the bigger the, I mean, whether it's a, I don't know if it's self-confidence, but I never ever get nervous. Never. Never. Never ever. Never ever. Not even once. In fact, the bigger Not the places. That much worse. No, the bigger the places are, the less nervous I get, which is strange. I mean, if I was in a little club where people are looking up your nose and kind of, mm. you know, like looking at all your defects and kind of, oh, look, his knee's mm. fat, and oh, mm. God, look, his feet are really big. That kind of thing annoys me. But when it's a big place, you know, the atmosphere is so huge and everything is so huge that you just don't get that nervousness, which is strange. Bloody well, like. I'm sorry, England, but if I want to wear a dress, I wear a dress. Hurry up, darling. Put them up. Shut up, big ears. <laughs> the good thing about this place is nobody can call me a pig. <laughs> 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 oh, the language. <laughs>
like England laughs at sex. It's like embarrassed by it. Yeah. And I think that we're, you know, we're... We're embarrassed by it. Lots of things, art, anything, no, anything, no, that's bit, anything that's a bit sensitive, no, it becomes main, iffy, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, but I mean, sex is much more important than art, isn't it? Because, like, sex is something that everyone has to do and wants to do. And I think that, you know, this whole, you know, like, question of sexuality, like, people going on about... You know, like people look at me and they say, oh, you know, you must be deviant. I mean, I am the most puritanical person. I mean, I am grateful that anyone would want to go out with me in the first place. Another little interesting fact is yes, yes. I've never ever ended a relationship in my life. So they just continue all the time. No, I mean they don't. No, I don't People think shut me. Oh, I see, yeah, I see, yes. <laughs> but I've never actually ever ended a relationship. So I mean, to call me a decadent person is like I mean I, I know, didn't. I didn't. No, I'm not saying you do, <laughs> no, but you know, sometimes I read the papers. Might, yeah. Like you know, when Princess Margaret was very rude to me, there were like letters saying, "Oh, Princess Margaret was right and everything." Why was she right? How can anyone hate me? The victims we know so well. They shine in your eyes when they kiss and tell Strange places we never see But you're always there Like a ghost in my dream And I keep on telling you Please don't do the things you do When you do those things For my puppet strings Of the strangers void for you We love and we never what places our hearts in the wishing well Love leads us into the stream And it's sink or swim Like it's always been And I keep on loving you It's the only thing to do When the angel sings There are greater things Can I give them thought they got rid of Gary Crowley, but unfortunately, I'm here with him to do the new...